week on My Classic Car. We'll travel to Kissimmee, Florida for the Old Town Saturday Night Cruise. This tourist destination is host to one of the largest weekly cruise nights in America. Get ready to check out some awesome rides. We'll also look at performance engine components for GM cars. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Kissimmee, Florida for the Old Town Saturday Night Cruise. Old Town is a shopping, dining, and entertainment destination just down the road from Orlando and Disney World. Every Saturday night, Old Town hosts a cruise that brings out hundreds of rods, customs, and classics to this cool place. So joining us now to tell us all about the details is Cruise Master Mike T. How you doing, Mike? Real fine. Thank you so much. And you've been doing it for how long? 14 plus years, Dennis. Every Saturday night? Every Saturday night without fail. We've had two exceptions recently. Two big names that you're well aware of, Charlie and Francis. They kept us away two Saturday nights. But other than that, we're here consistently. So it takes, a, it takes a hurricane to take you down, huh? That's what it took. Wow. That's what it took. Yes. Now, how did it all get started? This was really an, kind of an offshoot of an event that we did here for five consecutive years called the Auto Fest here at Old Town. It was great. We did about a thousand cars wow. an, uh, annually. And offshoot of that become the Saturday Night Cruise. They, at that time, the uh, general manager, named, his name was Deke Hundley. He has since passed away. He and I got together and uh, came about with this concept, and uh, it's been a winner ever since. It is dynamite. Now, I don't even know how to describe Old Town. What? Tell me about Old Town. Well, it's just a winning combination is what makes it so successful, and we car people love to come here because we're catering to everybody. The, the, the family can come here. There's something here for the children. We've got rides. We've got A&W restaurant. We've got food. We've got fine restaurants for dining. We've got shopping for the ladies and the girlfriends, and the guys can kick the tires. It just really works. Well, you know, I've been hearing, uh, hearing about it for years. People say, have you done Old Town yet? Have you done Old Town? And, and so, you know, it's known kind of far and wide. Is it, is it mostly regional in its participation, or do you get folks from all over? You get people here from everywhere. If we, when you used to look around Trophy Row here tonight, or this afternoon, you'll see we've got cars here with New York plates on them and Vermont plates on them. A lot of high-quality cars, too. Absolutely. Uh, we want cars here to be, to be decent-looking, fine automobiles, and that's exactly what they are. Now, Saturday night is the kind of 72 and older, but you've, you've uh, expanded into a Friday night. Venue yes, too, right? That's exactly right, uh, and it is geared at 73 through 87, and newer if they're customized. So we have some fun with that as well. So you've really, I mean, you've grown over the 14 years. How many cars do you draw on a normal Saturday? A typical Saturday night, we do about 335 is our average throughout the course of the year. And it is really a cruise, right? Absolutely, absolutely. These cars come in starting as early as 1 o'clock, but at 8:30 sharp, we put these cars right in the middle of Old Town, the brick streets. It's the old cars are the only cars that, or trucks that ever uses that brick street. No other vehicles. You know, okay, it's a Saturday night cruise. It's mid-afternoon, but there's a lot of cars here. I know you got a lot of work to do, but let's check a few of these out before it's time to cruise. All right? Very good. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Coming up, we'll check out some GM performance engine components and more from the Old Town Cruise. Is one of the wilder Ram Air setups around, isn't it? That's yeah, cool. Pretty trick. <laughs> well, hey, in the garage today with Keith Manning from Year One. Keith, how you doing, man? Good, Dennis. Thanks. And we're going to talk about performance. And what better car to do that than a Buick GSX 70 GSX here? This is owned by Mark Reeves, and it's restored to concourse level. This thing's perfect in every way. Yeah, definitely. I think he scored uh, 399 out of a possible 400 points. Uh, I heard uh, I heard he lost a point for leaving the floor mats in. Uh, yeah, you're not judges. Yeah, no. they, yeah. they have to get you for something. <laughs> yeah. Well, this thing's been put back again, just like it came off the line, concourse correct. This thing was plenty fast to begin with. You wouldn't want to be messing around with performance on this car. But, you know, muscle cars, you just always want them to go faster. 
Well, you know, uh, one of the prime attractions to muscle cars is horsepower. You know, a, a GSX like this has 370 uh, horsepower bone stock. But, of course, for some people, 370 is not quite enough. That's only, that's only the beginning, right? Right. Well, I got to believe that uh, if I wanted to go faster, your one could help me out. Oh, most definitely. And, uh, you know, one of the cool things about it is it really doesn't matter what kind of car you got. There are hot rod parts around for virtually everything. Show me what you got. What I've got here is a selection of, um, of good go-fast stuff for uh, Buick, Olds, and Pontiac V8, some of the less traditional yeah, yeah. muscle car engines. I mean, you could get uh, pretty much all you wanted uh, for the Chevys, the Fords, and, and, and most of the Mopars, but these are a little bit out of the mainstream here. They are. They are. Um, you know, one of the cool things about this hobby and this industry is the fact that if there's a demand for something, then the aftermarket will step in. And it, it's really cool that, uh, that companies like Edelbrock and, and Holly and Comp Cams and all those guys are still doing development on these engines that have been out of production 30 years. You've got to love it. Right. Well, what all do we have here? What do we have to play with? Well, you know, Dennis, uh, an engine is a big air pump. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the better you can get air in, you know, burn it with the fuel and then get it out, the, the better the engine's going to run, the more efficient it is. So the key to doing that primarily is through the valve train and through cylinder heads. Mm -hmm. So I brought some valve train components here. What we've got here is a shaft roller rocker setup for a Buick V8, and it's almost too pretty to put in an engine. That right? baby is beautiful, <laughs> man. And a uh, complete, complete roller setup? Man, yeah, smooth. it's a roller setup, a lot less friction, uh, which, of course, translates to more horsepower. You know, you don't lose as much uh, in the actual working of the product itself. And that's a translation I like. Translates to more horsepower. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the perfect kind of translation. Camshaft? Got a camshaft here. Uh, and of course, the camshaft uh, controls the valve opening and closing events. And then really, the cams are known as the brains of the engine. Uh, so the proper cam is, is critical to good horsepower. Now, I can get just just a single cam from you, or I can get a full set, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can get uh, a single cam if you want to swap them every week, like a lot of the racers do. Cam, you know? cam of the week. Exactly. <laughs> you know, look, looking for that extra two horsepower. Uh, but for most people, you know, you'll want to get a you'll want to get a kit like this, which will include the timing chain set, the, the valve springs, the lifters, the locks, the retainers, the seals, the whole nine yards. Everything you need. Right. Well, uh, you know, we still got to got to get air in there. And, uh. Definitely, uh, go back to the uh, air pump analogy. You know, uh, one of the key components uh, is the intake manifold. This particular intake's an Edelbrock piece for an Oldsmobile 350 V8. Ooh, another again, kind of out of the mainstream. Definitely, Oldsmobile engine. definitely, a little bit out of the mainstream. If you think back, you know, students of muscle car history, you know, think back to a W31 Ramrod <sighs> engine, and that was a good running. Oh engine. man, those, yeah. those things were bad. Now this is a, it's all cast aluminum. Right kind of the latest technology, and this one looks like it's kind of a mild rise. Do they do you make a, a meaner one, too? Yeah, that's one of the neat things about it, uh, is you can, you know, cam an engine and get an intake manifold, for example, to fit a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're looking for just a warmed-up street machine, you know, an intake like this performer is perfect. If you're looking for something that's going to be a drag strip terror, right, then, you know, you're going to have a big, tall, single-plane intake. Yeah, real high-rise cam. Woof, right. woof, woof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about these babies? Yeah, one of the neatest things that's happened here in the last few years uh, for, for non-traditional V8s is the fact that uh, Edelbrock and a few other companies have come out with completely new, modern aluminum cylinder heads for them. Aluminum heads. Right, that's oh, amazing. Here, these, these are for a Pontiac V8, 326 up through 455. And, uh, you know, I mean, not only are they, is it brand new cylinder heads with uh, all the things that that entails, but it's modern chamber design, it's modern port flow, it's modern valves, modern valve springs. I mean. It, it's more than just having the ability to save some pounds, you know, with a new aluminum cylinder head. The performance is going to be right. you know, greatly right. improved. Because it's, it's uh, 30 years newer technology. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. Well, hey, if you want any of these go-fast goodies for your Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, or frankly, Chevy, Ford, or, or Mopar, your one can fix you up. If you want to learn anything more about all this stuff, log on to MyClassicCar.com. These things are so beautiful. I'm not even sure I could put them in the engine. I, I think it's, it's art. It's <laughs> Eastwood.com. Unique tools, coatings, supplies, and solutions for all your restoration needs. Next, we'll mix it up with a Maverick Grabber and a custom 27 Chevy Hauler. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Ken, looks like a 72 Maverick Grabber, is it? Yes, sir. It's actually a 77, 72 Grabber clone. Oh, wow. So the donor car for this was a 77 Mav. The actual car is a 77. The donor car was a 72 grabber. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's true. You did pull You put them on. That's true. Yeah. So so what all did you have to do? I guess you changed the bumper because the 72 yeah. is a thinner bumper. That's right. That's right. The bumpers on the 77 is a really fat, yeah, they were clunky. chrome yeah. bumper that stuck way out. These look a lot better. And of course, the grabber hood. Mm -hmm. And a uh, bit of a paint job here. A little, yes, little bit yellow, yeah, isn't it? It's almost like banana yellow. <laughs> It screams, I'm telling you. It's, it's seriously yellow. 
But you've done some nice stuff to it, I, and you have the distinction of perhaps being the first Maverick ever to be on this show. Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, I, I think they're underappreciated <laughs> that's, cars. That's true. Very nice true. looking wheels. Thank you. Those are Cobra R replicas. Yeah, obviously, you've done some uh, work on the interior. That's not stock either. It looks pretty cool. Yes, yeah, sir. Those are uh, actually out of a Ford probe, the two front bucket seats. And you've uh, stitched in your, your <laughs> Maverick those, insignia. Those I like heads, that. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. So, you know, even back here, you've done some subtle touches that I think are pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like your headlight bezels. Are those powder coated or, they, they're, or your taillight bezels, I should say? Regular painted, painted with, uh, actually, spray can. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out pretty good. That seems fitting for yeah, a Maverick, almost. Go. It That's does. right. Well, what do you got under the hood? I bet it's not the stock gotta, engine either. No, sir. It's a uh, 302. Had an inline six in it, 250. And you can't run around with a car looking like no, this. No, absolutely not. With a six oh, cylinder yeah. in it, so I. So I know Mavericks had a hood prop. They didn't even That's have these right. springs in there. Uh, one yeah. day I'm gonna change it over and have some springs put on that hood. So you've you've added some stuff to that too. You got you know a... uh, Edelbrock RPM intake manifold. Uh, it's got a little mild cam to it. Uh, MSD ignition hooker headers. Wow. Now these were never known for their suspension either. I mean, no. you've done some work there. Yes, sir. I've changed out the front springs to 621 inch lowering springs. Put some new rear lease springs in it after 30 years of wear and tear on yeah. them. You know they droop a little bit, so I've changed out the rear springs. It, Motors down the road pretty nice, handles pretty nice. Yeah, yeah it actually and people does. see you coming. Yeah, definitely see me <laughs> they coming. They definitely see you coming. So you're having a good time at the old time? I'm having cruise? a ball. That is great, man. Well, you got the yellowest car here, i got to tell you. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it out, yeah, thanks. Mavericks. Thanks, yeah. Sir. I hear you. <laughs> well, Bob, it's a really nice tea bucket you got, but it's what it's sitting on that kind of caught my eye. <laughs> yeah, this is a wild rig here. Did you build this, baby? Me, yes, sir. Me and my friend Jerry uh, had... Uh, Cut the cab apart. It's a 27 Chevrolet. Was it a, was it originally a hauler or not? No, sir. It was originally a pickup truck. And oh, okay. The cab was real small. So, so you had to make it bigger. That's right. We cut the, we cut it down to doors and we cut it down to center and made it wider and longer to fit onto the uh, motorhome frame that it's sitting on. So it's on a modern day motorhome frame. Right. Now, how right. about the engine placement? Did you have to do anything? We had to move the engine back about two feet to keep it behind the fenders where it's supposed to be. In in with the Chev with the Chevrolet frame. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it is, but uh, it's a labor of love, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so how I mean, how long did it take you to do? It took 11 months to uh, from start to finish to build the truck. You know, that's not that bad. No, it's not. But you have to stay on it every day. Well, it looks pretty comfortable inside too. It looks like you built it to ride. Yes, sir. Does it, does it handle pretty well? Oh, it handles excellent. 65, 70 miles an hour down the road. You don't even know that you you're driving a truck and turn the air on. It's comfortable. As being in any car. Well, it sure doesn't look like any car, though. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it is a wild-looking machine. Yes, sir. It's, it's different. Sometimes you got to be different to be a little better, you know. <laughs> well, and you know, you got this matching tea bucket. How nice, color coordinated and everything. Nice little tea bucket. Like uh, what am I looking at? Three fifty. Three fifty Chevrolet. Yes. Looks sir. like you beefed it a little, though. Yeah. See a little bit of engine work to it. High-rise manifold, dual quads. Yes, sir. And, you know, the T-buckets, they have to make a little bit of noise, so uh, oh, you yeah, want to keep yeah. it stock. You know? yeah, no, a stock T-bucket. Now, there's an interesting concept. Well, <laughs> well you T-bucket guys are crazy anyway. I mean, you're all nuts. I've, I've, yeah. I've come to the conclusion. But this is a, this is great. you got a great place here. You're in the shade and everything. Have you, have you come to this cruise before? We've been to this cruise since 1994. Wow. And uh, it's, it's just a good place to spend a Saturday night. It's, it's every be, day of the year, rain or shine, it's, it's it, going it's on. Happening, huh? It's happening, It's happening every week. Well, yes. you got to be the only guy here with a color-coordinated T-bucket and 27 Chev hauler, i got to say. Well, I sure hope so. If there's somebody <laughs> else copies me, they got a lot of work ahead of them. Hey, man, great rig. Thanks okay. for bringing it out. It's okay. cool. Well, thank you for taking the time to look at it. Nice work. Ed, we'll brave a quick Florida shower, then go big with a 67 Go-Go Mobile. Welcome back to My Classic Car and the Old Town Saturday Night Cruise. The night cruise was nearing, and a little rain wasn't about to ruin this one. I've been doing this for a while, and you got me stumped. What is it? This is a 1967 Gogo Mobile Coupe. <laughs> From where? Germany. And whereabouts? Uh, a little town called Dingelfing. How, how appropriate, a little, a little town. Just, what, Dingelfing? Just worked out It right. really is appropriate, isn't it? And 
I mean, this is amazing. How did you come to own one of these? Well, we went to a, uh, an auto auction, saw somebody there that had a very small car, ended up over a chain of events going to a micro car only show, fell in love, and now I've got eight of them. <laughs> well, you know, it's surprising. It's, it's tiny, but you know, there's a lot of room in this interior. Actually, the guy that I bought it from in California was over six foot, and he told me he had plenty of room, so I knew I was safe. Well, I saw you driving in with it, and it just completely cracked me up, but you did look like you fit. It fits just fine. Now, okay, so what powers a go-go mobile? Well, it's a purpose-built go-go mobile 250cc engine. All right, well, let's have a look at okay. it. Okay. There, there she is. That's the, all of it, huh? The go-go mobile small block. <laughs> two cylinders, two stroke. Pretty, uh, pretty heavy uh, oil mixture on it? It's uh, actually 25 to 1, and just to kind of point of reference on a chainsaw these days, it's 50 to 1. I, I love your bumper so, sticker. Anything more than 13.6 horsepower is just overkill. Well, I've got a funny sense of humor, and I thought that fit. <laughs> it's, it's dynamite, though. I mean, i got to believe that, that, that people just just smile every time they see it. So far, so good. Everybody's had really positive reactions to it. I think people really get a kick out of it because they've never seen or most of the time never even heard of a go-go So what do you say? It's, it's, it's two adults? Two, adult, two adults, two small kids, or about eight clowns. Eight clowns, eight yeah. Clowns. <laughs> well, man, this thing, is, this thing is great, and it braved the rain shower really well. I love it. Thanks for Thank bringing you. it out, I man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go-go. Stay close. We're coming back with a 1971 Charger Super B. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Lydia, a very rare car here. This is a 1971 71 Charger Super B. Right. You don't right. see these anymore at all. Hardly. There are not that many around anymore. A lot of them were just pretty much trashed. Yeah. You know, and they rusted yeah. away. But this was also, this was a one year only deal? For the Charger, yeah. Uh, Coronet had the Super B until seven, uh, till 71 and then Charger did it because Coronet only had the four doors and station wagons afterwards so they decided to try it with a Charger. Pretty cool car though. Again, Thank I mean you. I like it because it's so different and it's yours, right? And it's mine. It's all yours. My baby. Like the license plate says it's Herbie. Herbie. Right? <laughs> the yes. stock color that would be butterscotch. butterscotch. And the, the brown interior, I like this. And, and you've got a four speed cart with the Pistol grip shifter, nothing says Mopar like the pistol grip Ah, uh, you've got that right. Have you always been a Mopar person? Uh, no. Oh, really? Yeah. So you've had, you've had affairs with other cars, huh? I've had many affairs with other cars, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but I finally ended up with the best. So. This, it's monstrous. It is just really it's big. It's huge. And it's a, you were saying it's an air conditioner and four-speed car? Yeah. Pretty yeah. rare combination, isn't it's it? It's a very rare combination. Herbie. Herbie, my wife's last, last one, with a question mark. <laughs> there, there could be more, huh? Yes, yes. Man, yes. big car. How did you come by this? I had a 70 RT SE Challenger, yeah. and I brought it up to Chrysler Carlisle to sell. And there was a for sale sign on this one, so I bugged the guy for three days straight. And it's and yours. Yeah, yeah, he didn't even swap with me. He, he thought I wanted money. So that's why it took three days, and I didn't. <laughs> I just wanted the car. How cool. Well, what Now, what power is it? I guess you got the 383 Magnum, right? Right. Well, let's have a look at it. Okay. Serious hood there, too, isn't it? Yes, it is. And the engine bay is the same color as the car. That's, that's what Mopar does. That's right. Great engine. 383 is a pretty it's a, much a bulletproof engine. It is. It really is. You can do anything with this engine, and it's fun to drive. Now, you, you and your husband both have Mopars, right? Right. He's got a 67 Coronet RT. Oh, that's a nice car, too. And we just picked up for him, too, actually. But not as rare as this. May I shut no. it? No. Sure. And, uh, I mean, do you drive it a lot, or is it kind of a special car? Well, we only moved to Florida about two years ago, and I used to drive it a lot more in Connecticut than I do here. And obviously, you're not daunted by a little Florida shower. You don't care. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Mopars can take it. Mopars can take it. Wipe yeah. it. Are you having a good time at, at Old Town? I love it, yes. It's a cool event, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I've been here a few times, but this is the first time I've actually brought the car here. Yeah, I don't know why, but I guess I wanted to wait for the rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thanks a lot, Lydia. Thank you. She's it was a beauty. Great talking I love it. To you. Herbie. Thank you. Herbie. Thank you. Oh man, I had a blast. Old Town really does have it all, and I'm not just talking cars. Next time you're vacationing in Florida, you gotta check out this weekly cruise. It's a must see. And for complete details on everything that's happening down in Old Town, just log on to old-town.com.
Next week, we'll check out a fascinating collection in Franklin, Wisconsin that includes a 1936 stout scarab. The scarab was way ahead of its time and could be considered the granddaddy of the modern minivan. Plus, we'll take a look at the very best in interlocking floor coverings. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Cage. Happy motoring. Attention, my classic car fans. Go online now to check out our latest selection of DVDs. Order the Inside the GM Special Vehicles Collection. It includes an amazing look at GM's rare historic and concept cars, only $19.95. Or order the legendary Ford, Chevys, or Mopars DVDs. And now, you can get all 26 My Classic Car episodes from 2005 in one DVD set for only $24.95.